G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Cookie's Fish Room. My name is Norm for those who don't know me and today I will be talking about the cycle process of a tank. Now, this video I do have notes on me because I do forget um, the order to do things in, uh, just getting old age I guess. So I do have my notes in front of me here and uh, I'll be reading from them, I hope you don't mind. So these notes will help me help you do the right thing. So today we'll be talking about the fishless cycle in the tank, as there's two ways of cycling a tank really. Um, but yeah, we'll be talking about the fishless cycle here. So for those who um, like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, hit that subscribe button and don't forget the notifications bell. So that, will, that way you will know when we bring out a new video that's there and designed to help you out. Again, thank you once again for those who already have. Now, fishless cycle. There's probably a couple of ways of doing this, and there's the way with the cycle taking cycled media from another tank that's already working and moving it into the new filter, into the new tank. That's kind of an instantaneous um, cycle. You still have to check your parameters when you do that because not everything is guaranteed when it comes to fish. So that's the easiest way to do things, but there is a traditional way because not everybody can get access to a filtered um, filter media that's already been used. So um, here we go. Now, when I talk about beneficial bacteria, this is the stuff that I will be recommending for you to use, BB here. Beneficial bacteria, neutrophin cycle. Best stuff out there at the moment, the um, the amount of bacteria per mil is so much higher than some of the other recommend, recommended um, and more popular brands out there. And there's a reason why this one works so well. So um, have some of this stuff on hand all the time, not just for cycling a tank, but in case your cycle crashes or you have to medicate your tank for whatever reason, have some there just to top it up in your tank all the time. All right, so now when you're doing a fishless cycle, what, apart from the beneficial bacteria bottle, the other most important piece of equipment that you can have is an API master test kit. You want to know your um, parameters because that's what's gonna guide you if the, to know if the tank is cycled first. Okay, so go to the supermarket and get yourself some pure ammonia or you can do this with basically the old way feed, um, ghost feeder tank. So you want to add four ppm of ammonia and people are saying, how do I know what four ppm is of ammonia? So what I do, I, depending on the size of a tank, I usually guess the amount, um, six drops of ammonia or 2.5 mils of ammonia to five mils usually gives me that four ppm. And it's not the same with every tank. I'm talking about a tank that's 100 liters to 120 liters. Most tanks are variable in size. You have different amounts of water in it due to you know plants, due to substrate, whatever it is in equipment. So that's just a rough guide. 2.5 mils to five mils, usually about a cap to half a cap, depending on the cap size again, that will give you the four ppm of ammonia. Yeah. So add it and then wait for maybe three or four hours and then test it and you will get an idea of how much that amount that you've added, how much ppm that does equal to. So test your water every day for ammonia and nitrite. If the if you see um, the ammonia get down to one ppm, you wanna add more again and get it back up to four ppm once again. So just remember how much you added initially because that will give you a rough idea of what you need to add the second time round. Once you see nitrite appear, okay, so you don't need to test for nitrite, um, nitrates and your pH levels just yet. Once you see nitrite appear, so you're only testing nitrite and ammonia at this point, you then start testing for nitrates. So the nitrite actually indicates that you have the first set of beneficial bacteria. 
your tank is starting to develop what is necessary, the necessary tools to get rid of that, um, that nasty nitrates that's in the water and ammonia. If you see your nitride drop below 1 p.m. ppm, then dose ammonia to keep the nitrite around 2 ppm. Once you have 20 ppm of nitrate, then you have the second set of beneficial bacteria. You're kicking goals at this point. Um, do, if you get to that point, you're doing really well. So don't be too impatient. I'm the last to speak. I am the most impatient person in this world. You want to be able to have patience doing this because it can take up to four weeks on average most times. Okay, let the ammonia and nitride go to zero. And then, okay, so and then, not before any a time before this, and then do a 50% water change. So at no point are you doing a water change because the minute you do a water change up till now, you are resetting all the hard work you've already done. That apply that really messes up your um, your parameter readings. So you don't want to do that. And um, basically, once you get to that point, your tank will be cycle. Now, to help speed this along, you can dose. Uh, beneficial bacteria throughout the whole process. Again, grab yourself some of this, dose some of this as you're going along. It does have a, um, what do you call it? A recommended amount for new, new aquariums, um, you know, for water changes and that. So I kind of cheat when I use this stuff. When I first start a new aquarium, I actually pour half a bottle of the 500 ml bottle straight in. You can't overdose this stuff. The more beneficial bacteria you got, the better it is, the quicker your tank will cycle and the less stress there is on your fish when you put the fish into the, to the aquarium finally. So main points are to have that um, Nutrifin cycle on hand, dose it throughout. Don't forget the API test kit. It is very important. Now, once you've cycled the tank, have a look at your pH levels adjust it accordingly. And that will be another video about how to look after your pH levels, but adjust it whether you need to use buffers or limestone or whatever you use to, or even, you know, um, well, I forgot the name of bicarbonate soda. So that's what some people use to adjust their um, pH levels. Whatever you use, use it um, to suit the type of fish you have. So thank you for, um, sitting through that, uh, kind of painful, I hate reading from, you know, from notes, but it's kind of hard to remember for myself at the moment, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys got the most accurate information. This is something that gets questioned. Um, this question gets put up to us a lot on Cookies Fish Room. So I hope this is useful to you guys who are setting up a new tank. And hopefully, Wherever you are in this wonderful world of ours, you are having a wonderful day or enjoying whatever you're up to right now. So enjoy your fish, um, enjoy your family, hope you're all well, and thank you for tuning in once again to Cookie's Fish Room. Take care of yourselves and bye for now.